of his life. And just like that, it is 7.30 and time for us to go through the detailed newspaper analysis inside a freshly pressed 981 for a Friday and you know who to expect. Uh, the phone trio of Waji. Waji is at the corporate MC on Twitter. Good morning. Good morning, Dan Tony. Good morning to you too. <laughs> and of course, Mr. Reti Bakari is here at TCO Gay <clears throat> I like that, the fun trio. Yeah. It is, yeah. it's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I got no. the two best husbands on a Friday morning. Yeah, hey, look at it. Uh, remind me after the show, they'll tell you where I saw you yesterday in Lagos traffic. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. No afternoon oh, wow. delights in my car. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a morning delight. <laughs> and then, then Tunde, good morning, Tunde. Morning, He's welcome. at Big Coops. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Lagos. You can communicate with us, share your views, our observations, and comments on the stories that we're about to share. Share it through WhatsApp on 0809 444 0981. That's 0809 444 0981. And on Twitter at smooth981fm, use the hashtag freshly 981 I'll start with you, Waji, uh, for this story on this day newspaper. 22 House members moved to return Nigeria to parliamentary system of government. Uh, the House members, numbering 22, uh, they are seeking to return Nigeria to the parliamentary system of government uh, that pretty much gives control to, uh, yes. That's Missouri T's Yeah, Missouri T's clap. The lawmaker said uh, that they were already 71 in number. They are collecting more signatures and they, they, they seem very positive about getting the mandatory two thirds majority needed to facilitate the constitutional amendment just to divest powers from the presidency. What are your thoughts, Raja? Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. I usually don't pick the first stories because mm -hmm. um, I like to just ease my way to it, but I, I had to <laughs> take this one, um, for a number of reasons. As a staunch Pan-Africanist, I find this quite offensive wow. given that what or why we came on the parliamentary system to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, the parliamentary system, especially for countries that actually belong in the Commonwealth or belong in the Commonwealth, means that you are reporting to a particular head of state which is outside of the country vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the Queen of the United Kingdom at that particular time and point. That was the whole ethos of the parliamentary system as it occurred in Nigeria. So the only time that it existed was out in our first republic when we had a prime minister, and then we had a head of state in Ambiasi mm Great. -hmm. And then we now kind of did away with that and went to a presidential system. Mm -hmm. Now, my without necessarily going into the history of the pros and cons of everything else, what bothers me about the statements made that a parliamentary system is more effective than a presidential system is this particular quote by the individual who put the notion on the floor that says there are countless empirical records which show that output growth under presidential regimes is in zero points negative while output growth under parliamentary systems clocks from one point and above positive where on earth did you get this data what research have you conducted? <laughs> what uh, what have you done? Or what are you saying? That I can give countless parliamentary systems that have failed mm. over and over again from an economic infrastructure and people development index time and time again. So I don't know what particular data you're using to indicate that a parliamentary system will be better in a country as Nigeria than a presidential one. Furthermore, if we're going to move to a parliamentary system, then what now happens to the head of state position? Are we going to call the queen back and be like, hello, Elizabeth? No, you want no, why do you know? I understand that. No. I'm joking. The point I'm trying to make is that we need to think these things through before we put them on the floor. You can't just come out and say empirical data that now points towards economic outputs and things of that nature, mm. so therefore we should favor a parliamentary system. That's not how this works. Okay. All right. I, I'm sorry, I've got to come in here. I have, look, presidential systems are incredibly expensive, expensive. incredibly argue. no we will argue on that point alone the one thing we do know is that nigeria cannot afford a presidential system that's number one number two a parliamentary system gives you more direct access to your thank you to your lawmakers and to people representation that oh lord that See, I just spoke Jamaica no long. <laughs> then <laughs> Folu is laughing like no, falling no, off a chair. <laughs> yeah, I just I just saw the whole spoke Jamaica too. That's why they're okay. all on there. Right? So so the part the, the parliamentary system, it's actually more conducive for us as Nigerians. And number three, fundamentally, is the cost of holding this whole thing because 
once a president, always a president. What we need are people, like politicians, who actually have the mindset that they work for us as a people. The problem with the presidential system is it actually gives them some highfalutin idea, deluded idea that they don't work for the people. Mm. Whereas the parliamentary system actually states, and you must have clinics with your, um, what do you call them, with the your constituencies, etc., etc. Tunde, please come in. No, 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 come no, no in I mean, so, Mr. Ritchie has touched on all, most of the points that I want, wanted to raise, which mm. is the cost, mm. right? And uh, let's not forget, we are a developing nation, so, so you should pick a system that is better, you know, that's, uh, that's for your purpose. Right, um, the presidential system is expensive. It's within a parliamentary system, it's easier and less expensive to determine leadership. Leadership of the nation is defined by who heads the party mm -hmm. that's in power. Mm -hmm. Right, it, it's, it's a less, it's it's a less frictionless, um, yes. you know, okay. method and approach. Representation is also closer to the grassroots, closer Absolutely. to the people. Right, so there, there are a bunch of reasons why I would you know, advocate. Let's forgive them for throwing out uh, outdated ad. Yeah. Yeah. But, but beyond, <laughs> but beyond yeah. that, yeah. but beyond that, the presidential systems, especially if you now institute the proper representation mm -hmm. of the grassroots levels, can equally work. The issue here is this: it's Absol shown in hold America on, that on. it doesn't. Hold on, hold on. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm. So whether you call the individual who's heading the government a president, or you call the individual who's heading the government prime minister, if you do not take care of the root cause of our issues, then nothing is going to change. Moving to a parliamentary system is just putting a lip. On a donkey, you're putting lipstick on a donkey. No, no, it's going to change, no, it's change. It's change it entirely. No, change look, we need to do a show, a debate, a proper show debate on change. this. Mm. We need to move on. Yeah, thanks, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that was fun. Your comments, Parliament. Do we do we want to? Presidential system. Lipstick on a donkey. Oh boy. Uh, Premium Times is next. Premium Times, uh, uh, Premium Times released this story really. Our uh, MDs on medical leave uh, did not jump bill. It's a, a statement from uh, Fidelity Bank. So they released this statement <laughs> on their website. Uh, posted it to react to the story that was reported on Wednesday by Premium Times saying that the MD failed to report to service charges. And we know that uh, Mr. Okonkwo is facing the 14 count charge of conspiracy and money laundering alongside a former director of the First Bank, Dada Lawal, uh, before a federal judge. Uh, but the management of Fidelity Bank on Thursday said that the managing director, Nambi Okonkwo, did not jump the administrative bill that was alleged in that report and grant, granted him but has been away on medical leave that he has written a letter to the CBN and because of this he did not attend uh, the bankers, uh, bankers committee retreat that he was scheduled to attend. I mean, what are your thoughts, Ms. Irriti? Well, so here's the thing that worries me a lot about this story. I think we forget the back story. The back story is to do with Desani. Yes. Um, Desani right. and he's the MD and you're basically, what's happening here mm. is the, the um, EFCC or the government are basically saying, Mr. MD, somebody came to pay money into your account mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. okay as a part of the 153 million right that in person so mm -hmm. mr valentine iriti came to pay money into your account mm -hmm. okay now iriti's money is dirty money that's what they're claiming mm -hmm. however valentine you accepted that money mm -hmm. so therefore we want you to come to court mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we want you to come to court and bear witness mm -hmm. on our behalf mm -hmm. that iriti's money is dirty mm -hmm. right i don't know whether the MD knew or not, but I think that's actually stretching things a little bit because whether the MD knew, what? Whether, the, knew whether the money was dirty or not. Oh, what I'm saying okay. is the backstory. Mm. But to actually ask a bank, a bank MD, to say, "Come and be witness," it's nothing abnormal. In, it's it's it, well, it's somewhat no, it is abnormal. Is my point because mm. why no, are you going to ask no, them to no, be a witness? It's a financial, it's a financial instrument. Yeah, but, yeah, but that you're custodian. Yeah, but you're you do all the checks and KYC. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's if it's for. So, so I think really this bail story is really about whether or not you had a medical condition. No, no, no. The, the I was just giving the background. I was just giving the background okay. to but remember this has been going on since last year exactly. i think it was yeah now yeah that's right now going back to this today right we spoke about this yesterday actually didn't we where we yes, started we talking did. about surety yeah. the question is yeah the, the 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 question is um you know like um fumi said yesterday fumi said look the, the, one of the things that happens when you're on bail is that they keep asking you to come back every day, every other day, mm. to the point where it gets sort of irritating and annoying, and and, and puts your and puts you at you just think, gosh, I can't deal with this mm. anymore. And I'm almost inclined to believe that part of it is to wear you down. However, Fidelity Bank have responded and said, look, 
because RMD is on uh, um, uh, what medical, call leave. medical leave. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a there's a statement. It says the bank received a letter from the EFCC about 48 hours ago yeah. requesting for the attention of the MD CEO. The bank responded to the EFCC immediately that the MD was on medical vacation and gave an indicative date that he will report to the commission. I don't think that's unreasonable, do you? Yeah, no, no, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what is it? And and the way we read yesterday, oh, he jumped bail, you know, like. But we gone, did also explain campus. what that meant. Which all well, that it which said was administrative. That he just didn't show exactly. Yeah. He just wasn't there when and he was asked the to be there. And, and the so moralist of the story is still. If you're going to be sure already, yeah, let people know. I think especially yes. if you know that you're already in I this think situation, the if, you're, if you're going to leave outside of that, outside of the surety, if you're going to leave the shores of a country when you are on bail for whatever reason, it, you, it is, it is um, as far as I understand, it is incumbent on you, you yeah. to let the relevant people know yeah. that this is why you're leaving and this yeah. is what has to happen, as opposed to then having a, a summons, mm. then 48 hours after you maybe you've already left, mm. and then not saying that. But we had to take the story to clarify that. Yes. Um, so in the interest of fair reporting, we found Absolutely, yeah. Because clearly, yeah, just it seems to, to be say, a communication yes. issue. Absolutely. Moving on now to this next story, a libel suit, and it's from the Daily Times, a libel suit. I was never investigated by DSS. Magu is saying this. Uh, the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Yeah, Ibrahim Aguhio, he, he said this yesterday. He told Justice Doris T. Okorbi of the State High Court in Ikeja, Lagos, that he had never been investigated by the Department of State, of, of State Security, that he's, give, he's given evidence in the 100 million naira uh, suit that he filed against the publisher of the Sun newspaper and four others over an alleged uh, defamation. You know, they had reported earlier that he owns uh, certain properties, and he said, they should go ahead and prove that he owns those properties. That he only owns one uh, property that he leaves with his family. I'm interested to go into this. Let, let us know what you think. Well, one of the things he also says is, I cannot buy a house in Maitama, even Maitama, even if I have the money, because houses are expensive. Mm -hmm. Is that I very, live, very expensive? Yeah, very expensive. <laughs> I live a modest life. My wife is a civil servant. We have only one house in Karu site, mm -hmm. and Karu is not exactly the posh part of. Abuja, Abuja no. um, and when I retire, I will go back there. So, the onus is on the defendant because he's basically saying, "Look, you, you, nobody's ever investigated me mm -hmm. for for uh, um, stealing any money." Ever since he took office as acting since I took, yes, you know, he did. The interesting thing is, he didn't say ever. Mm. He says ever since, since I took uh, office. Mm. He didn't say before, mm. you know, or maybe mm. post. Mm. Yeah. So he's pleading, if you like. What we expect civil servants to have, just one house, one half, one house, one wife, one job, two mm -hmm. kids, one a word. dog, a cow, mm -hmm. you know, one Christmas turkey, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's what he's basically presenting here. Now, he's suing um, uh, the newspaper, what's it called? Is it The Sun? Mm. Yeah. And four others. Yeah. The Sun newspaper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, this is important. What, what I like about things like this is it puts everybody on their toes when you do reports you know that you've got to do proper investigation we have to start doing responsible journalism mm -hmm. just in the same way that we say look ncc nbc and all the other th people shouldn't sort of you know muffle our thoughts and muffle our, our words mm -hmm. and allow us we press freedom we also need to be responsible mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see what happens here this is on like the man Miss Alaji, Alaji Dola, Ganju Dola, who, <laughs> yes, Ganjuje, who, you know, we know that there were evidence, etc., etc., and the guy actually did proper investigative reporting. He used mm -hmm. the tools that was uh, available to him. So let's let's wait and see. I think this is a story that we must, um, we top. must, yeah, and we must yeah. stay on top of, yes, you know. Well, he's suing these people for a hundred million mm -hmm. dollars. I, I thought that was actually relatively. If he is, if he does, yeah, if he does have, um, how do you say, evidence mm -hmm. to say yeah. it's nonsense, yes, it's. A new telegraph is next uh, for the story. Still going back to Ajiokuta still, uh, the, the structure that keeps receiving money. So Senate approves $1 billion US dollars for completion fund. The Senate yesterday gave their approval for this sum uh, from the federal government's share of excess crude revenue. It said it should, it should be devoted to the immediate completion of the Ajiokuta steel uh, company. However, they said that all the monies that might be appropriated or authorized by any tier of the government from time to time should be part of the funding for the completion of the company. What are your thoughts, Wajib? Um, Valentin, I think you just hit the nail on the head mm -hmm. uh, regarding where they want to put the particular funds to. Mm -hmm. uh, because none of this makes any sense. The next year, it's got to make it the 41st year since this initial project kicked off. I mean, White elephant? Well, yeah, exactly. That's what I wrote down. It's not only a white elephant project, but it's a white elephant that's getting gray and gray every single year because it just doesn't actually make any sense. Um, 
and the the request to begin to allocate funds towards this project that has not yielded one inch of steel in four decades is quite telling regarding the mentality <clears throat> thinking of what we actually do and the kind of money that we need to do it um valentine you made a fantastic point maybe some kind of scheme i'm not accusing anybody mm -hmm. but maybe it's just some kind of way of people diverting funds mm -hmm. so that they can have quicker access to that funds i don't know mm -hmm. but this needs to be put to rest because frankly speaking it keeps coming up over and over again and maybe somebody has figured out a loophole that if we can allocate money or some kind of funds or resources towards this particular project yeah, and it gives access to further ways mm -hmm. for people to get get their hands dirty yeah. um but i actually don't understand why this you know keeps being pressed on beyond the reasons that we have just stipulated now and people just need to be careful with going down this road over and over again because at some point somebody's going to do a full audit and show that nothing's coming out of it it's just absolute mm -hmm. corruption just very much mm -hmm. thank you so much buddy mm -hmm. yeah you know what they say about um doing exactly the same thing mm -hmm. and expecting mm -hmm. everyone over and it's expecting a different of insanity, result yeah. Ab absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I i'd like to think that we're like a person we're smart on that right yeah. so this we has are to be, no we are we and are people are noticing yeah people yeah. are smart on that so it has to be delivered i mean a job is <laughs> to fund <laughs> it, well is to cash what the Bermuda Triangle is the seafarers. Oh, oh. that is. That's allocated, it just disappears. disappears. Twitter, please quote All Big right. Coops <laughs> the you. way you, you quote me. YG2. Thank you for yeah. having me. Let, let's go over to some of the messages messages that have been coming through up on Twitter. And Kem Nake up on Twitter says, Parliamentary system of presidential Nigeria, or all presidential, Nigerian politicians will always find a way to abuse sure, the system. Sure, sure. Um, and while we go over to WhatsApp, that's what Joaquim is sort of echoing, saying it doesn't really matter which system we pick yeah. it's still the same corrupt Both nigerians will be in charge of it away. but then joe disagrees he says what nigeria has lacked over the years is true representation of the people and that's what we need to solve and that is what a parliamentary system offers so Absolutely. trust me when i say with the parliamentary system you will have lawmakers that will up their game they will have to up their game more people still sending in messages obj from Aja says um a bank should know his customer this banker customer relationship the bank should not receive billions into the account of a yam seller. The bank should have been put on inquiry. So therefore, the EFCC is in order to invite uh, the MD of the bank uh, to have this conversation. Um, while uh, we've got Chika and Gina saying the only valid argument between parliamentary and presidential system of government is the cost. If I may ask, is it the same lawmakers that will earn all manner of wages and analysis Thank you. that will still run the system? <laughs> because for me, this proposal by the House is a quest for more power and resources. No. All we need is strong institutions, that above all and sundry. Okay, we keep okay. it moving. Up next, the Senate passes an amnesty bill. This is in from the Vanguard newspaper, and we're going over to Tunde uh, for his thoughts on this one. All right. Um. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so the Senate has passed this amnesty bill, um, and uh, it's, it's it will be interesting for a number of people to note that um, even though we've had the amnesty program running for a while, it actually has been passed into law. It's been pretty much being prosecuted and executed based on um, I don't know I don't know if it's this, uh, what we call the equivalent of the. Um, um, executive orders, yeah, Nigeria, yeah, but you know, pretty much prerogative. presidential prerogative, mm -hmm. exactly. And that's what we've done. It um, as of now it's been passed into law. A bunch of others, um, you know, prerogatives and orders are now rolled up into into law, which is which is good. It's right for us to formalize things. But it's quite surprising that all of this started in 2009, um, and almost a decade later is when it's coming into law. You begin to wonder what exactly um, you know um, our lawmakers um, you know are doing. As, allowing this to drag on for so long. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the other detail um, in the story is, I mean, something that we've known for a while is that um, militants or ex-militants get paid a, you know, a monthly stipend, mm -hmm. you know, and I want to have a salary for life. Yeah, sure. When, yeah, for, you know, uh, you work, it's, anyway, I just, you don't work. You don't work, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm saying you do, you do it until <laughs> something, and then you get, you get guaranteed, you know, a salary for well, life. You woke up when, when, you, when, you, when you juxtapose that against people who, who um who work their you know backsides off mm -hmm. and barely can get by then someone can turn up if someone has told me he's been at the bank and someone turns up and says you know i'm here for my ex yeah. or my you know militants allowance yeah. and they ask for an id card mm -hmm. and he gets paid it's very disconcerting and it points out obviously that this is you know this monthly stipend is at the prerogative of the president uh, mm -hmm. again another loophole in our system Look, so to me, this whole thing, although they've made it law and everything, another important point is that it needs to have an exit date, which is another, yeah. so that if anything, this law 
<clears throat> is useful because it must take place and execute for the program. It can't be perpetuity, so that's good. But for me, it's like an adversary adjustment of our way. It's a, it's mm. part of the structural issues we're talking about. Yeah. It's like placing a bandage on something that you require surgery for, mm. right? So again, everyone is right. It's not so much about the system. We, we, you might argue for it's one way or the other. It's the system and the people. Mm-hmm. Um, right. a, a more lasting solution for this for the, for the whole problem would be you know restructuring. There's a reason why people agitated. Mm. They agitated for a reason, right? Just taking a few of them out and sorting them. Is putting bandage on a deeper problem. You need to solve you. that deeper problem. Thank you for that, today. Um, speaking of deeper problems, I've got to read out this quote very quickly. Uh, Ian sent a message saying, "Please, how can someone open his own Ajawa Vita steel plant so, <laughs> <laughs> so that the person can be receiving allocation from time to time?" I'm telling you, we will brilliant. Even, Ian says we will even me a call. invest in our own allocation and pay revenue. Oh my God! Them. Please, info on how to open another Ajawa Vita steel plant. Just one line to reply that there's over capacity of at least 500 million million tons of steel in the world. Mm. Yeah. And because more of steel than the world because can, of the cheap can, imports from yeah, China, it's right. very, very more steel, there's more steel, steel than the world can consume. consume. Yes. Let's continue with our story. <laughs> uh, up next, we'll take this one from the New Telegraph. Nigerians, Chad, Chadians, and Sudanese to vote in 2019. This is what uh, the uh, Coalition of United Political Parties, as well as the People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Organization, that's what they are alleging. Now, they're saying that INEC, uh, by allowing the internally displaced persons uh, to participate in the voting, are planning on having uh, voting centers uh, for people living in Niger, Chad, and Sudan. They're saying that uh, this is how they plan to rig the elections. Now, Adi, I'm coming to you for this story, bearing in mind that yesterday we took this story, but INEC had declared very clearly and openly that they are going to create voting centers, yes, for IDPs, yes, but in 15 of the states in Nigeria, and this is because there are several states in Nigeria um, that have uh, dealt with um, that for one reason or another, whether it's flooding, um, whether it's the, the war and, and insurgency in the northeast of the country, um, there are a lot of it displaced persons within the country. So um, I, I'd like your thoughts on this um, alarm ringing that's going on here by, by these uh, coalitions. All right, let me, let me just start with this. I know a couple of weeks ago there was this committee that came up about how people need to be responsible with the things that they say going into the election season to avoid any kind of conflict, etc., etc. And there were representatives from different parties that came to sign that bill. Well, a couple of days ago, you posted something about the four agreements, a wonderful book that you told me to read. Mm-hmm. The first agreement in there is to be absolutely impeccable with your word. Mm. I'm not sure PDP is doing that, because by indicating that ANIC is going to actually set up voting centers outside the shores of Nigeria that's in direct violation of the constitution so that people who are of Nigerian descent that are displaced in Niger and in Chad and in Sudan or, and in, or wherever is absolutely completely insane. Number one, like I've always said, where is any evidence that you have to back up your accusations yeah, yeah. and claims towards this issue? Is it that you heard INEC is setting up voting centers in IDP camps and then you now concluded that an IDP camp is wherever an IDP camp is and Nigerians are located so therefore you're now making those accusations without any actual evidence? It doesn't make any sense and I don't understand the point of why PDP are now showcasing themselves to be clutching their straws and going after this thing. It is completely irresponsible and completely unnecessary. There's so many other things that you can now begin to do to quote unquote discredit the party that you're, you're going against in the election season without necessarily getting into things are just completely nonsensical. Mm. I don't understand the point of it. It actually doesn't, it, it, it's so ridiculous, especially when there's no basis for it, for you to actually open your mouth and make that statement. It actually makes you look like you have nothing f- to put forward or make any sense about. So I, I, I just don't get it. Uh, thank you very much for that. Something we do get, though, uh, speaking of elections, is that uh, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice uh, Walter Onoge, um, has directed more judges and justices to be appointed to panels of the election petition tribunals and the election appeal tribunals so that they can be speedy disposal of electoral matters. Now, he was represented uh, at an occasion where um, at this year's annual conference of justices in Abuja um, by Supreme Court Justice Mary Peter Odili, saying that, um, you know, and they, they warned participants against unnecessary association with lawyers that may be acting as conduits for politicians, no matter how innocent they may be portrayed. Also urged the justices to safeguard the independence of the judiciary and avoid any act that would invite the incursion of the executive into the affairs of the judiciary. Um, uh, over to you today for your thoughts on yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. All the recommendations we make um, are spot on, and they're, they're common sense uh, recommendations. If you have more judges appointed to the petitions, you can get to resolve a lot quicker. You don't have a situation where, you know, this is, is wandering um, several years into the tenure of uh, potentially someone who shouldn't, um, you know, who, who hasn't rightly or properly won, uh, won a post or won a position. 
information. Mm. So it's it, it's right. I mean, we should have there, and I think there are guidelines around you know time frames from which all you know disputes are settled, but we don't see that happening. Mm. So obviously, this makes a lot of sense. I've also had um, recommendations around mm. you know. Um, associate with as a yes. judge. Yes, uh, and not just as a judge, because he does mention lawyers, he mentions lawyers. various judicial officers, uh, being that uh, as a recent and, and previous year, we've seen uh, um, uh, in agencies going after um, lawyers, we've mm -hmm. seen them uh, questioning their relationship with their clients, um, and, and lawyers saying, well, you know, there, was no, there should be nothing untoward here. But now there seems to be an indication by the, by the mere mention of this, um, that the NJC is aware that things are happening. They are threatening to be the, the big stake, the big they stick, say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and all of that will have will help and have an effect. So you know, things don't happen as as blatantly as, as they, they have in the past. Mm -hmm. So step by step, every little step. Uh, and another interesting thing to note is that the president of the Court of Appeal, Justice Zainab uh, Bal Kachua, and I can actually say that it's nice to see the female mm -hmm. justices mm -hmm. being mentioned here, because sometimes you forget that they are mm -hmm. present. Also, did uh, uh, edge mentioned that judicial uh, judicial officers must watch their guards as it is their role to ensure that as a court the electionary rules and guidelines are duly adhered to as the world watches. watches. Moving on now, we've got this next one in. Um, Missy Riti, I'm going to go to your story actually. The reps are querying uh, the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria over a budget deficit um, and revenue under remittance. Uh, they're saying, listen, um, you are collecting internally generated revenue in dollars. How can you be running a deficit Short. budget? <laughs> it's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Especially considering that we've just had airlines complaining recently, saying that they don't have enough. And we were asking, well, you, they collect a lot of fees. Uh, FAN um, and the various airport authorities collect quite a lot of fees. We pay some of the highest um, airport taxes in the world. What's going on? Well, uh, look, there's a figure here. According to the lawmakers, the agency collected 58.7 billion as IGR in 2018, wow. but remitted 1 billion uh -huh. <laughs> to the Federation account. As the kids would say, my chest. Uh, yes, my, my hormones. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, bank accounts. No, it's very simple for me. So there are some things that are just black and white, okay? You isn't under. There are things that are just black and white. You collect dollars. You put it into the dollar uh, account. Let's just go back to the screen. They generated 58 yeah. billion. Yeah, and remitted, and they remitted one, one billion. billion. Okay. So, no, no, my question, no. Where is the, what you call a minister of aviation in all of this? <clears throat> no, please. We need to ask him some questions. Where is the minister of aviation? And then you go downwards. Whoever is deputy minister, if there's mm. such a thing. Whoever the GM, the manager of FAN, mm -hmm. the director of FAN, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, for those people, forget innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. Guilty until proven innocent. Put them all in the cage. Um, first. We, we don't and have the cage. Okay, we don't have a cage. Right, we don't have a cage in smooth, but we do have EFCC. They're the ones that should be. Thank you. Thank you for that, Miss Yuri. It's black and white. And let's move on to our final story. Uh, as, as the members of, of both our houses have been very present in our story, uh, let's uh, round up with this one. Today, House members threatened to boycott Buhari's budget presentation on Wednesday. Um, and the president has said that uh, they will put the appropriation bill before the lawmakers Wednesday, the 19th of December. That's next week. Um, but the House is saying, listen, yes. Your minister of budget um, mm. lied against us, mm. and he said that this delay is because of us. So we will not <laughs> look at this until we receive an apology. Didn't I predict that this was going to happen? You did, <laughs> you did, and unfortunately, it, it always happens. But um, are we, can we really not <laughs> yeah. move past a place where where um, uh, sensibilities are offended and, and look in the interest of Nigerians? Absolutely, that very Nigerian phrase and term, he lied on me. Um look, and they're still playing politics with this. And let's remind us as like you said, this is all over a comment. One a comment. I mean which the, min which the minister, minister has denies. Denied. It is denied. You, uh, these are supposed to be reasonably intelligent men and women who should display maturity. Um, and they're still playing for the decision. So all I can say is, can they, can all parties concerned on all sides, there, you know, just for once work for the people? Right. No, Thank that's you. impossible. Uh, in we'll this round country. up uh, <laughs> with uh, messages coming in. Um, uh, Bami Dele from Lagos says, uh, uh, "Please, have you heard that the money meant for a Guni cleanup is accruing fixed deposit interest in the commercial bank somewhere?" <laughs> I saw the news on Twitter. Well, it's Twitter, so we don't know. Um, <laughs> and uh, we've got more coming in. Uh, Ibuku from Malaka says, "This is false and fake news um, about the PDP uh, talking about IDPs. We should know uh, that the IDP simply means internally displaced persons. So how can they be outside of the country?" Mm -hmm. um, Ayodele just says, "LOL, you lied on me. I will tell." <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and uh, more coming in still. Please no put man. your name to your messages. If there's no name, you can't read it out. Um, uh, but up on Twitter, we have this one. From Peter Abiodun or Ayorinde says, it is when uh, disunited people are lucky enough to find themselves, to find ourselves with responsible leaders. Uh, he quoted a Bible passage and says, when thy king is a king, is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning, Blessed is the land when thy king eats in due season for strength, not for drunkenness. I have, no, I have no sure idea what that, what that means. means. <laughs> but thank you. Totally. Oh, thank you very right. much. We appreciate that. <laughs> uh, still more messages coming in. This one is in from Comfort from Edo Martins. Um, who says, why don't we state clearly our own definition of the word democracy and try to relate that with the I so agree of the constitution on the ground? I so totally agree. Democracy is not one size fits all. And Wiley says, a lack of accountability seems to be the bane of our democracy. Under the presidential system, every Nigeria is represented by a local councillor, a local government chairman, state assemblyman, state governor, federal houseman, senator, or president, who are all elected and maintained by taxpayers. But under the parliamentary system, just one or at most two people. So tell That's me, it. where is it easier to hold elected officers then accountable yeah. how do you hold thank seven you. different people thank you what i know is that those one or two people on the parliamentary system won't collect the salary of those seven people mm. for, for sure for really? sure thank they you. won't no, no, no. Yes, they, they won't they okay. won't actually right. they won't oh we, we need to have a this. proper show on this please <laughs> <laughs> we're out of time but we'll take this uh, one from papi k it says we, we do not have a once parliamentary or presidential he said we don't whichever. parliamentary or presidential <laughs> whatever election needs to be more demanding and asking questions from their leaders and now fan special thanks to analysts for coming there this morning for friday's edition of freshly press 91 at Miss Yogi and Miss Sisiogi in Lagos as Mr. Itabakari Yusuf at Tunde Okuki at League Groups and of course at Corporate MC that's YG. Coming up next we talk